Big banks get called out, Ukraine takes a pass on Bitcoin, and a bot buys drugs on the dark net for art. Today is Thursday, November 13, 2014, and the price of Bitcoin is staying in the range of around $410. I'm Stephen Chun, and here's what's happening today in money and tech. $4.2 billion in fines have been unveiled against six major banks in both the UK and the US by Britain's Financial Conduct Authority and the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Among the banking giants hit are U.S. peers Citigroup and J.P. Morgan and British banks HSBC and the Royal Bank of Scotland. Britain's FCA states that between January 1, 2008 and October 15, 2013, traders at the fine banks, quote, formed tight-knit groups in which information was shared about client activity. The banks failed to manage obvious risks around confidentiality, conflicts of interests, and trading conduct. These failings allowed traders at those banks to behave unacceptably. They shared information about clients' activities, which they have been trusted to keep confidential, and attempted to manipulate G10 spot FX currency rates, including in collusion with traders at other firms, in a way that could disadvantage those clients and the market. The U.S. CFTC has ordered the banks in question to cease all future violations and to strengthen their internal procedures to protect the integrity and confidentiality of their clients and traders. Mozilla Firefox is standing up for Internet privacy and has partnered with the online anonymity network, the Tor Project, to create Polaris, a strategic initiative that will improve the privacy of all Mozilla users. As Firefox explains, Polaris is designed to allow us to collaborate more effectively, more explicitly, and more directly to bring more privacy features into our products. We want to accelerate pragmatic and user-focused advances in privacy technology for the web, giving users more control, awareness, and protection in their web experiences. We want to advance the state-of-the-art in privacy features with a specific focus on bringing them to more mainstream audiences. Mozilla is also looking to host their own Tor middle relays to allow Tor to expand both its reach and its response rate. We are one month away from the Bitcoin St. Petersburg Bowl. Yesterday it was announced that sponsor BitPay has partnered with TrueCoin to make TrueCoin the official Bitcoin ATM provider for the bowl. TrueCoin's ATM will be custom built for the bowl to allow users to easily purchase Bitcoins with any debit or credit card. As BitPay's blog announcement explains, TrueCoin's sponsorship will facilitate the purchase of many bowl fans' first Bitcoin. With so many merchants in St. Pete now accepting digital currency, these game attendees will be able to experience Bitcoin shopping firsthand. The ATMs provided by TrueCoin will be placed throughout the arena, allowing fans and travelers to top off their wallets and enjoy the full scope of Bitcoin activities in St. Petersburg. The Bitcoin Bowl is set to take place on December 26. Like Russia, Ukraine has said nyet to Bitcoin as a means of payment, according to a post of the National Bank of Ukraine's website. While the digital currency was not handed a full ban, the country has merely warned its citizens against Bitcoin due to its use in scams and illegal activities. The announcement comes at a time when Ukraine's national currency to hryvnia, much like the Russian ruble, has experienced a massive drop in value against the U.S. dollar. The National Bank is sticking to its initial feelings claiming, quote, in order to protect consumers' rights and the security of transferring money, the National Bank recommends that you use the services of only those payment systems and settlement systems which are included in the registry of payment systems, settlement systems, and participants of these systems and payment service infrastructure providers. Russia, on the other hand, is continuing its implementation of a complete ban on Bitcoin and digital currency. Although penalties and fines for users have ultimately dropped in size, the reason behind the drops are currently unknown. Bitcoin wallet and vault provider Zappo announced today the launch of their wallet app on iOS and an update to their Android app. Zappo had previously launched an unoptimized version of the app on the Google Play Store back in October, but today sees the application's official launch. Affectionately referred to as a Fort Knox of Bitcoin, the Zappo wallet offers users an easy and seamless way to secure and manage their Bitcoin, as well as providing them Zappo's industry-leading cold storage security feature, the Zappo Vault. Zappo has also announced they've eliminated all network transaction fees from all transactions between Bitcoin addresses. Fees will still exist for other services like buying Bitcoins or using the Zappo debit card, but when sending funds, Zappo will cover the fees. A Swiss art exhibition named The Darknet, From Memes to Onionland, has been on display at the Newt's House St. Gallen in St. Gallen, Switzerland since the middle of October. 
The exhibition features numerous pieces ranging from video projects to memes to discussions. The most interesting exhibit, however, is a project called the Random Darknet Shopper, a bot created by medium group Bitnik that is given $100 in bitcoins a week, which the bot then uses to go on a shopping spree on the darknet. Everything it buys, it's shipped to the gallery where it's then put on display in the exhibit. So far, the bot has made some unexpectedly PG purchases like a Louis Vuitton handbag, a Lord of the Rings box set, and some sneakers from China. Of course, being that's on the darknet, it's also made some purchases on questionable legalities such as a fire brigade master key set, some smuggled Ukrainian cigarettes, oh, and drugs. Yes, the bot has bought drugs. Ecstasy, to be exact. The exhibition opened October 18th and runs until January 11th of next year. Find more information on today's news stories at moneyandtech.com. I'm Stephen Chun, and thanks for watching Money and Tech's Daily News Update.